Oh, good day. This is a video on starting up a coal plant fans from cold startup to purge. Uh, the basic equipment lineup, we have our induced draft fans. Here, they're 3,500 horsepower motors. Uh, from here, it goes up to the stack. Upstream, we have the precipitator. This takes out all the particulate. Ahead of this, we have this air preheaters. They're a regenerative type heater. The secondaries are about 30 feet across. Primaries are a little smaller. You have the flue gas comes through one side of the wheel. And the other side is your air going into the fans, from the fans to the boiler. So it basically transfers heat from your flue gas back into the boiler. It helps the plant efficiency quite a lot. Uh, we're gonna start the air preheaters. There's two motors on it. You have a backup drive and then the main drive. Backup drive's a little slower. This is for emergency use in case you lose your main drive. You don't want the wheels exposed to the hot flue gas too long or it will warp them. Uh, one problem with these air preheaters, if you're burning diesel oil, you can build a lot of soot up on them and you can't have a fire. They also will plug with fly ash. So there's soot blowers on them. Um, once they start plugging up, your ID fans are gonna run a lot harder and you could over amp your ID fans. So watching the DP across these is critical. They work by having a basket inside of thin metal. So the flue gas comes through and heats up the metal. Then as the wheel rotates around to the cold air gas stream, the heat is released back into the flue gas. So anytime you start equipment, you always wanna have somebody out in the field just to verify it starts, um, something's wrong with it. In this part, we're gonna start the backup. Usually you'd start the backup. Now we put it on auto so that it will be an auto once we start the main. Uh, usually you should wait until you get a call back from the person that filled that there's no rubbing, no wear. It started okay. This is one of the permissives to start the ID fans. Always wanna watch your current too when you're starting up. This is the secondary. If you don't start the back and put an auto, it just trips the back up off. They don't spin particularly fast. I say the big prompt these is build up of ash in them. And if you do lose the drives when you're running, uh, you'd have to shut down, it would damage them. This one, I'm just going to start not put in auto and show what happens if you don't have an auto. It's designed to trip so you don't run the two motors together. See, we tripped the backup. Uh, we got the alarm. There's all your drive current alarms over here coming in. This one. Okay, back in auto. Now we have all the air preheaters are running. Our alarm screen, we got our drive currents came in, high amps. Generator storage tank temperature is coming up. Let's acknowledge them. Usually don't have more than about six alarms on the screen. I need to pay attention to what's coming in. A lot of times important alarms will get lost in the sea of alarms you get. Okay, this is the ID fan. There's a lube oil skid. Uh, the oil is cooled and strained and feeds the bearings. These bearings have slinger rings in them. So the oil is mostly for bearing cooling. Uh, it's a double suction fan. It has vibration on it and temperatures. Like I say, the motor's a 3,500 horsepower motor, variable frequency drive. So the draft is controlled by the speed of the motors. OK, 
Okay, we're going to start in what's called minimum select. Uh, this is slow speed, about 60 RPM. It's kind of a, like a turning gear. You'll roll out the fans. Usually you want to run it for about four hours. Just to make sure that there's no warpage in the shaft. So it's coming up to speed. Let's say the boiler's full. It holds about 120,000 gallons of water. Yeah, it takes a couple hours to fill it. Plus you need warm water, uh, deoxygenated water going into the boiler. <coughs> okay, we've got our fans minimum select. Uh, we're not going to wait the four hour run time for these. We're just going to go ahead and go for the video purposes. But every time you start equipment, there'd be somebody out in the field and they would be calling back that we had a good start on it. Uh, just verifying that there was no problems with the start. Got all our drive currents in. Okay, here's your ID fan control page. You control basically two fans on each page. Induced draft fan control. Put the ID, put an ID fan speed to auto. Dampers are going to try to move when we do this. <clears throat> we got B in normal select. It's kind of nice you have buttons to get to the other set of fans quickly. These are designed you have to highlight uh, before you can change them. Just prevents accident accidents from hitting the wrong controller. Okay, normal select allows the fans to be in control now. <laughs> the dampers drove closed once you put one in. Once you put one fan in normal select, the other ones try to close. Uh, in case you're just running one fan. Yeah, the flu gas this won't go here and recirc back around. These are always ran manually open. Unless you have a fan shut down. We start up a fan, you have to be very careful how much air you put through it, otherwise you stir a lot of dust up. And then you have an opacity exceedance. We'll have to watch the furnace pressure. Right now it's slightly positive. We'll put this, we'll run this in manual control until we get the FD fans running. This plant will run with just three ID fans, but at a slight reduced load. Total uh, gas flow is around three quarter million cubic feet per minute.
We have 72 RPMs. This is the current coming in. This is the current going to the motor from the drive. <laughs> if you can move these things to normal select quick enough, the dampers won't shut completely. On this side of the page over here, we have all the emissions information. Stack's about 650 feet tall, so it does provide some natural draft. When the plant shut down, you leave all the dampers open, it pulls a pretty good wind flow through the boiler, the wind boxes, uh, people doing work in there. So there's normally a good draft through this. K or ID fans are all in normal select, which means they're they're good to run. Furnace drafts in manual. We're gonna bring up the fan speed just a little bit, try and get down to a negative 0.5 inches water column. Okay, we're trying to go negative. This furnace runs negative 0.5 inches. Pretty hard to control without much airflow going through. We don't have any of the fans running yet. We'll put this into auto. And if it doesn't control well, we'll have to take it back to manual. Okay, here's your set point. Here's your process variable. Uh, this is your output. This output runs all four fans. It's split between all four fans. You can bias your fans if you have one that's pulling too much current. Uh, you can change the bias and slow it down or speed it up. That's useful when it's running full load and your air preheaters start plugging or just other conditions. So you can bias the speed on these fans. I have to watch your current, drive current amps, as it's a VFD drive, uh, motors can get pretty warm. Okay, we have the ID fans running, the air preheaters are running. Now this is just the gas stream coming from the boiler. These dampers we can move to regulate the temperature. Once we start up, we'll shut down the air to the primary air heater and put it on the side the pulverizer is running. These two primary air preheaters, these are from the primary air fans. From here the air is going to the pulverizers. These are the secondaries. They come from the secondary air fan. They feed the boiler wind box, uh, which runs your burner sleeve dampers, and you overfire air for NOx control. So we're going to go to the FD fan screen. Uh, these have air heaters on the intake into the fan room. You want to prevent the air cooling off the plates below about 140 degrees on your air heaters, otherwise you condense moisture. And that could be some corrosive substances in the moisture. Uh, it'll corrode out your air heaters. So we preheat the air to minimize your average cold and air temperature. Basically you have your air heater coming in. This is the fan room. Uh, it's your secondary force draft fan. That uh, comes in through your secondary air heater. The flue gas comes the other side, opposite direction. From here it's feeding the wind box on the boiler. This feeds your burners and your overfire air. Once again, you need to call out that you're starting the fan, let all personnel know. You need to have somebody out there just to verify that it started okay. And we also raise the plant voltage up. 
Uh, these run 7200 volts. As you start more motors, the plant line voltage will drop. So we change the taps on the auxiliary transformer and try and maintain a little over 7200 volts. As your voltage drops down, it takes more starting current to start them. Too high voltage is hard on the insulation, the windings. So usually we try and maintain right around 7200 volts. So we'll use the tap changer on the transformer and maintain around 7200 volts on the motors. We're going to start the A motor. Uh, it's around 2000 horsepower motor. These kind of motors, you got three starts per hour. There's a lot of rate rules as to how often you can start them. As you can see, the dampers are driving closed. Once these are closed, then the motor will start. You also want to watch the amps. We'll throw a quick graph up here. There's a tremendous amount of heat developed when these large motors start. Okay, the outlet damper is closed, the inlet's driving closed. This will swing the plant power pretty good. We have both dampers are shut now. It just started it's pulling 300 amps. 300 amps is all the more the gauge goes. It's actually a little bit more than that. You can see it come up over here. Should take less than about 15 seconds for it to start dropping. So if it stays at high current, more than about 15, 20 seconds, should probably trip the motor. Okay, it's running. The dampers are closed. Uh, allows the motor to run a little bit and cool down from the start inrush current. Once it times out, your outlet damper will open. Now this 26 amps doesn't look like a lot, but that's at 7,200 volts, three phase. There is some protection relays on the motor. Negative sequence, which looks for imbalance in the windings and you have your high current, instantaneous and high current average. Okay, dampers went open. We'll do the same and start the B. Once again, you'd announce on the plant, you'd have somebody out there. You can see our furnace pressures went slightly positive. We'll probably have to adjust it if it doesn't grab control of it. So this air here is feeding the burners in the boiler. Your primary air feed uh, pushes the coal into the boiler through the pulverizers. The control system, your ID fans maintain the furnace pressure negative. These fans are part of the combustion control, maintaining your O2 set point. But all the fans work together. And when the thing trips off, these will keep running wide open because once the fire's pulled out of the boiler, it can go negative pressure and can collapse the boiler. So they have a circuitry to prevent the furnace from going negative. We're going to have to go back to the ID fan control. At that point, it's not controlling. We'll take it back to manual. Get it back down to negative. At low rates like this, the controls are not too accurate but they're also uh, fairly large fans um. okay it's starting to move now 
total airflow down here, 5%. We have to be above 30 to purge the boiler. And it's also a trip point. If it drops below 25% when you're running, it will trip the boiler. It's for protection of having a furnace without enough air for complete combustion. It can develop explosive gases in there and cause a furnace explosion. Down here, drum level is negative 4.3. There are limits. It has to be above a negative 4.5 to get a permissive to start the igniter. Hopefully we get this thing to run in auto when we start putting the air to this. Sometimes you just have to help it out a little bit. Put it back to auto. And that should control. Okay, back to the force draft fan page. Right now we have 5% airflow. Over here on our burner permissive page, We're going to try it. We'll do the purge here in a minute. These are all the permissives that have to be made up before you can ignite the igniters or coal lighting have to be made up. Right now we're trying to get the permissive, purge permissives in. So the next thing we have to do is get the airflow up. Up to watch the furnace pressure. The trip on this is minus eight inches and plus five inches. It's for protecting the boiler. Usually you want to take a few percent on each fan. And hopefully the ID fan control will catch it. Basically, we want our airflow up above 30% for our purge permissive. Pretty much all furnaces have purge permissives. The purpose is to get rid of any uh, combustible gases out of the furnace so you don't have an explosion. This will purge for five minutes. That's fairly typical. A lot of furnaces, they have a certain time frame and it's somewhere around there with so much airflow. The ID fans are catching the increased airflow. Over here we have the total flow in 1,000 pounds per hour. So it's flown about 600,000 pounds per hour of air, secondary. The lower part of the furnace will be real negative and the top part will be a little more positive. It has kind of a chimney effect in it. The furnace is about 200 feet tall. See our motor amps are coming a little bit as we put more air through the fan. The fan's requiring more horsepower to move that volume of air. That's why the dampers stay shut when you start. They're not really working very hard. But now we're actually starting to move weight with the fan. You have our cold end temperatures are low. The O2 in this furnace runs right around 10% till you get to 
fairly high load. Then it'll start controlling on O2. This is designed to run most efficiently at full load. So lower loads, the efficiency is down quite a bit. Okay, we just got the low, low alarm in on the air, so we're gaining. We're up to about 40 amps on this fan. Basically, we want both fans to be pretty similar. We won't put these in auto until we're done purging. It's always a good idea to put stuff in auto as soon as you can, otherwise it gets forgotten. Okay, we're above 31. <laughs> okay, on our purge permissive screen, we have all these made up. The only thing we're missing are the sleeve dampers. the sleeve dampers every burner has a sleeve damper purpose is to control the amount of air feeding in that individual burner uh, here's the boiler layout on one side you have four decks of burners four burners a piece it's on the front and the back side this is the sleeve damper position they have to go to light off position that way allow enough air through the furnace to ensure you have a good purge. Uh, there have been some nice changes made. We can go to the start and it should move all the sleeve dampers, otherwise you have to move them manually. It takes a little bit of time. Okay, you can see all the dampers are moving. They'll have to go, the blue is cool down, that's minimum airflow just to keep the burner cool. Uh, the light offs, white, that's adequate airflow to ensure good combustion. Before we put fires in this, we'll have to start the precipitator and the DSI, which is dry storm injection to remove any sulfur. And we'll have to start all the mercury removal emissions. <clears throat> Plus there's paperwork has to be filed uh, for the Department of Air Quality. Okay, we got them all. We're missing one on B pulverizer, burner two. Uh, this is when the pulverizer start screens. We can use this screen or we can also use um, this graphic screen. This plant used to be a panel board uh, with switches and they went to the, the DCS type system where it's all done with graphics and computers. Okay, the B uh, Bravo two is coming open. Pretty much call everything out in phonetic alphabet in the plant. Like this is Alpha and Bravo. Um, one problem you can have is say E and D and all they hear in the field is whatever they want to hear. So it's good to use phonetic alphabets. E is echo, D is delta. It just helps clarify it. Otherwise you'll have somebody adjusting D when you want them to adjust E. Okay, on our purge permissive screen, we have all the permissives, and it has started purging. It has to go through a five minute timer. It's kind of nice on these screens. 
a lot of the newer plants have this where you can go to your permissive screen and see what you do not have made up yet. So we can't start igniter because the main fuel trip isn't reset and the cooling air is not running for the flame scanners. But the boiler won't start till it's completed its purge. It's part of the boiler trip lockout circuit. This is all the boiler trips. So there's a lot of things that will trip these units. Okay, our purge has completed. Uh, we timed out at 300 seconds, five minutes. We're gonna start the igniter cooling air fan. Uh, this provides cooling air to the igniters and also the flame scanners. There is quite a bit of heat. Put the other fan in standby. One thing you always wanna look at in plants, make sure all your backup equipment is in standby. It's a good idea to go through all the screens for you really start the shift okay all the purge permissives have been made we go to the flame scanner all our dampers are open we're going to start pulverizer a igniters everything looks good Okay, here's the igniter screen. This is the igniter trip valve. We're opening igniter trip valve. That's part of the safety circuit. On our burner permissive screen, you can see we have all the permissives made up now. We're going to start the igniters. Okay, we got the start ready. <laughs> First the igniter extends in, it moves in about 16 inches. Then the oil valve and the air valve open, and now there's a spark plug that lights it. Uh, this yellow line means that it is showing we have a flame on it. The flame scanners use ultraviolet light. You can't use infrared, there's too much infrared. So when fuel burns, it gives us an ultraviolet signature. We have to have the igniters running, at least one running, before 10 minutes or the boiler will trip. Uh, it voids the purge. These are required for lighting off the coal main burners also at this point okay we have all the burners igniters running now we're going to set the other dampers down to cool position this was kind of a new deal. We can hit one button and move everything to cool. The problem is it's gonna drive everything down with it. They're all moving down, so we'll have to go to the A and put all these back to light off.
Okay. Now went back to light off. We'll check our flame scanner page. All the sleep dampers went to cool down. This is just providing a little bit of air through to cool down the burners. It's another reason why the O2 is so low when you start up. You have to have the cooling air go through. So at this point, we have four igniters running on one deck. Um, before we can start coal burning, we have to have the precipitator in service. Like I say, the dry sorbent injection removing any sulfur. And the mercury removal using activated carbon has to be in service. And DEQ has already been notified that we're starting up the plant. And that pretty much concludes getting the plant from the boiler full of water to a set of igniters in. Uh, at this point, we'll start warming up the boiler. It takes about two hours to get up to around 600 PSI, 600 degrees where we can roll the main turbine generator. Also, we'll put a steam-powered feed pump in. When it hits about 500 PSI, right now we're running a little electric startup pump. This little, down here we have negative 0.4 inches water. Drum level is negative 4.4. We have a startup feed pump running here. It goes through a, just a single element control valve. <clears throat> These are your main steam driven feed pumps. Right now they're shut down. So when you get about 500 pounds steam, we'll go ahead and start running one of these and go through this control valve until we get up about 1400 PSI online, uh, pretty good steam flow. And then we'll put these in automatic where the speed of the feed pump will control the drum level. And that concludes this video. Hope it wasn't too boring, but that's how the fans work, balanced draft fans. And see you next time.